I'd like to call to order the uh, April 11th meeting of the Woodstock Village Board of Trustees at 6.31. And uh, we will start with uh, citizen comments if there are any to be heard. Hearing none, we will move along as I expect this to be a fairly short, perhaps the shortest meeting of the year. Um, Sounds good to me. Okay, we'll start with our manager's report. Oh no, additions to and deletions from the posted agenda. Are there any? Bill, you're you're out there somewhere? Yeah, I'm out here. Can you hear me okay? okay. Thank you, yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Can you see my little face? I'm kind of ugly. So. Uh, I don't see it, but as long as I can hear you. Uh, I'm here, well, yeah. Let's... All right. Um, hearing no additions or deletions, let's move on to them. I'm sorry. Hey, Jeffrey, it's Seton. Oh, Seton is here. Well, welcome from uh, welcome from across the border, Seton. What town? What's yeah, New Mexico? Canada. No, Canada. No. Oh, Canada. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Fifty fifty there. We've got two deletions. Um, what do you expect? That are being postponed until. Next month, so one is Tom Dalton's request for East End. Okay, we can barely hear you. See, we can barely hear you. I'm sorry. Okay, can you hear me now? A little, a little bit better. better. Okay. Um, so one is Tom Weisler is going to come back to us next month. He, he needs to gather a little bit more information. Tom is here. Tom is here live. Okay. Um, I knew he was gathering more information. And then I believe, Jeffrey, you talked to Alex that he was going to wait until next month. Yes, and I'll I'll cover that when we get to his permit. Okay. That's all I have. Great, thank you. All right, now let's uh, hear from our manager, Eric Duffy. All right, and Nikki, you can still hear us, okay, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, my computer's being no, worked. Uh, perfect. All right, so just a, a few things. Um, one, uh, the trustees should be. Um, should have received the uh, audits, the final audits, I believe last week uh, sent by uh, chairperson. Uh, we are trying to organize a meeting maybe in early May um, where we have the R to come and kind of do back-to-back -back meetings with the village and the town to save us from only paying once the R to come out here. Um, the R is pretty free, so we're just trying to make sure the time works for us and we'll schedule the meeting as soon as we can. That's uh, so one. Uh, two, um, again, um, the um, trustee should got an email from me today um, that we're gonna have a public forum this coming Monday um, at 6 p.m. at Town Hall uh, to elicit public comment on the police chief search, the new police chief. Um, it's gonna be run by the consultant we hired. Um, it's gonna be in the listserv uh, at least twice in the next few days. I sent an article to the Vermont Standard, so they have that as well. Uh, to try to get the word out, have people come and kind of give us what they're looking for in the new police chief. Um, what else do I have? Um, we are um, to not go into more detail. We're um, waiting on something from the union and negotiations with the police union, uh, but we're hoping to have it tied up very soon. Um, and finally, uh, we've started internally to put together job descriptions for all town hall staff. Um, Nikki's been working with me on this. I want to thank Nikki for all all her hard work. Uh, and the goal is to kind of create more accurate job descriptions from what might have been hired or posted five, 10, 15 years ago, uh, and then use those job descriptions to help uh, create performance evaluations uh, in June for all employees and kind of set that goal in a semi annual annual uh, process. Um, and that's all I have. Any questions for Eric? Oh, I do have one more. I'm sorry. Um, so our DPW director has been working on the issue with some of the poles in the village. So the pole kind of in the island there, kind of across from your store, the little uh, dummy. dummy, yes. Um, so there's an issue with the <laughs> electricity there. And um, the solution is basically we would have to dig a hole underground on the street there, kind of to the conductor and back. Um, so it's just a matter of when we want to do that. And if we want to do that, they can make sure we have electricity to that pole going forward. Um, so I would think we'd want to do that as soon as possible before yeah. summer season. Yeah, so if that's something the trustees want to do, we can go forward with that. But I just want to bring that up and we can have our 
the mark goes a better um, insight into what it actually entail and how long it may take. But would it not follow the route of the current line to it? There is, but he explained to me um, where one of the things is that it's on the other side and towards the green. So we have to redo some of that work there. Um, he was pretty confident they could do it overnight one night, uh, something like 8, 8 p.m. and kind of work for a few hours and, and dig that hole and get that done. Uh, but then we have to then repave that area as well. Um, so just a little bit of work, some some money. Um, but I just want to bring it to the attention now. Yeah. So are there any of the other trustees have a question about that uh, other other than agreeing or disagreeing with me urging that that happen as soon as possible? Another question, uh, Jeffrey. How often how often do we need electricity in the dummy? I don't know that. But well, there's I the would... light. The light there. The light itself. Okay, that, that's the light itself. That's the main thing. the main thing. And, and holiday time, of course, we also have Christmas tree there. Um, and I think it's just a, sorry, a question of timing. Like we said, like once we get in the summer season, tourists are here. We're not going to be slow until the ground has to freeze again, and then we more difficult to go in and do the work. At this point. Right, which is that's the reason why I'm urging it to happen sooner than later. So, are we in agreement to? Um, have that happen as soon as possible? I see yeses. Yes. Okay. Something in the budget for that or no? We Is can, it... we, we have money that we can do, spend on. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll I'm not too worried out. about it. Just so wondering. the most accurate quote we can get, and then if it's uh, beyond a reasonable, I'll bring it back to the trustees and we have a conversation, but we should be able to find the money. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. I'm for Great. it. Yeah. Hey, Gary, All right. Can we also give everybody an update about the- Dean, a little louder, please. Oh, sorry. Can you, Eric, can you give everybody an update about the union negotiations? I gave a, a brief one. Um, I, I don't want to go into too much detail um, publicly about where, we, where we're at, but I will just wait on one more thing to be accomplished. Anything you want to add, Seton? No, that's good. I just had more. Okay, thank you. All right, on to the uh, financial report. And uh, any, uh, anything you want to bring up before I ask a few questions? No, just uh, two things quickly. One, um, I don't have it in front of me, but my projections uh, that we've been working on have us crossing the finish line um, with a, a, a small surplus, not a massive one, but hopefully that's where we, that's where we stay. Um, and then second, like I said before, I just urge the trustees to try to ask questions ahead of time so we can be more prepared and have the correct answers for you instead of going back and forth by understand time constraints as well. So yeah. Well, sorry. I'm gonna ask a few anyway. <laughs> so go for it. I'll try to I'll see what I can answer. Well some of them are suggestions. Uh, you know I see that we have under short term rental registrations. We're below where we were last year. It's hard to believe that that's really reality um, in terms of people intending to do short term rentals in the mm -hmm. village. Um, so I, I think it'd be a good idea to put, have Nikki put something out on the listserv, uh, reminding people that they only have till the end of this month before fi uh, fines would be incurred if they do short-term rentals without registering. Yeah. Okay. There's that. Uh, and then if you could remind me on, on page three of our sheet here, which is transfers in. I could probably know the answer to this. I can't remember it. Uh, Two dash four seven zero two transfer from trustees of eight thousand oh, dollars. I believe that's the money from the the trust funds that come in from that Jill Davies yeah. worked with. From which one? The trust funds that that um, okay. are outside the. Okay. Like the trees of the sidewalk. The sidewalk. This would be just just the trees. Yeah, the money that they they. The sidewalks is fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, okay. So that fifty thousand has not been transferred in yet. No. Okay, it's just still sitting outside, and this would be for the inoculations. I believe so. Correct. Right, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on that. Um, for the action. Um, and uh. Under 2-5002-931, seasonal decorations, unlike other years, we haven't spent much within this budget. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering, this just, a, my question is, the amount that's left is 
fungible, is it not, for other uses that we might decide? Yeah, so there's, I, I want to just confirm because it is, it is listed on grants and general fund to make sure it's, it is just operating funds. Um, so yes, as you know, like as long as we come in under budgets for the overall budgets, that's kind of our main, main concern. So we you know, typically use money from other accounts to cover overages and underages. So we could use it for something else. Um, yeah. That's uh, electricity for uh, it's a dummy pole if you, if you want it. Um, but yeah, the money's there to come be use that uh, Pressy's will. Okay, great. Um, office administration, obviously the manager search ate up most of that huge amount over what we budgeted. Yep. Um, but uh, the, the rest of it is over, much, much, much of it is over budget also. That, so that is just something you're likely to be wanting to put fairly tight till the yeah, so this possible is, until the next budget. So this is actually a larger conversation that um, I believe Woodstock needs to have town in prestige wise or village wise um, is basically we've never really funded IT services for the village and town. So a lot of the stuff you see here on communications, equipment repairs, maintenance, um, even off supplies have something to do with IT services. So we have consulting we use. Um, but just a lot of that um, cost is tied into into that. Um, so that's something that, as far as I'm concerned, IT has never really been funded fully or at all on throughout Woodstock. And if I'm wrong, I'm happy to be. No, but is that is that is that because we don't have a line item? Yes. Okay, so that's. So you'll see a lot of communication lines throughout any budget. Um, and if you look at the towns, obviously a lot more. And a lot of that's just our IT services that we've been paying for. And we've, we're putting that under communications. Yeah, for the most part, yes. So if you look at, you know, so, equipment repairs and maintenance could also be that consultant working on fixing a laptop or computer that's broken. Should maybe create a new line item. Yeah, so it's something. Or I don't want to create extra work, but because I know we, we had this conversation last year mm -hmm. where we have so many line items. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, either that or communications mm -hmm. and IT work. I don't know how we yeah. yeah, that line item is already in there. Uh, we just need to budget. We just need to budget for it properly. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is the bottom line. Yeah. We didn't budget for yeah, this, yeah, the exactly. work that was needed. So we just we find where we put money, and that's where we put yeah. it. Yeah. So we just need to remember that the next budget. Um, I only have one other question, and that has to do with the uh, the tree fund, and the question is really for Don Wheeler. We really need to get a report because it doesn't show much having been spent. Um, out of that twenty thousand dollar fund, of which I know some of it is meant for next year when we are doing the ash tree inoculation once again. Uh, what account are you talking about? The uh, the tree fund, the twenty thousand dollar tree fund. Can you just point me to where that is so I won't give you the correct information? Um, I don't know where it is. What what page are you on? I'm not on it. Oh, I have to find it. Um, I'm just curious sure if it's reserve fund or operating fund, so it'll be two different. Okay, I think it's under five, uh, 500. Uh, two, five hundred. Five You can see that or look for twenty thousand dollars. There it is, tree fund. It's it's five zero one one two dash five zero one one dash six one three. Okay, I see it. Yeah. Which it shows nine hundred is actually been spent. Yes, yeah, so that's operating. So this money is the money that needs to be spent by June thirtieth. No, well, some of it. I wasn't that some of it. I know the budget for next year, we did an allocation with some went to capital reserves, some went yeah. to operating. Right. It looks like it's all just operating. So I mean, uh, we need to hear from Don Wheeler. Okay. Yeah. Because for the next uh, meeting. Yeah, for the next meeting. Yeah. Because I know that treats them are getting late. Yeah. They're starting to bud. And so I don't uh, know yeah. what he's doing. Um, and I think the village needs to know that. Okay. Those are all my questions to the trust. Any other questions from any of the other trustees regarding the financial? I just have a comment uh, directed Eric, and I made this comment a number of times. I've been on a number of nonprofit boards with budgets like this that are not as big, but I'm making comments with the uh, NHL. It's very helpful. 
so we don't have to go, oh, what's this one again, which we spend a lot of time in doing in every meeting. Um, it's not essential, but I'd love to show Eric how I do it on my systems, and maybe it could be um, something we could use to benefit the entire village when we're looking at budgets. That's all I wanted to tell you, and we could talk about it later offline. Yep, sounds good. Sounds good, Bill. All right, let's move along to our chief support. Kirsten is reporting for the village police. Uh, so those of you are now, this is our newest officer. I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, you can see her. No, that's good. That's yeah. good. No. Yeah. Can she come where we can see her, please? She is now where you can see her. I can't see her. She's going to be sitting in front of Jeffrey, is where she should sit if she could. Um, move over a little bit. In, in the camera. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Kirsten. How's that? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello. Um, so I'm Kirsten Murphy. I was born and raised in Woodstock. I come to Woodstock with a little bit. Uh, close to 10 years of law enforcement experience, uh, first from Rutland City and then the Windsor County Sheriff's Department. Um, so Chief Blish is away at a conference right now. Um, this week is National Telecommunicators Appreciation Week. So if you talk to one of our dispatchers, um, please thank them for their service. Woodstock Police Department Corporal uh, Jacob Holmes left the department on March 24th to go work with the U.S. Marshal Service. Um, our Woodstock part-time officer, Matt Freitas, left the department and has started with the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, we did, Woodstock did hire part-time officer Joshua Linton full-time, and he will be at some point obtaining his full-time certification in the near future. He's assigned to the midnight shift, which was Corporal Holmes' shift. Um, so this enables Woodstock to maintain full shift coverage. Last week was Distracted Driving Awareness Week. On Thursday, as part of the Governor's Highway Safety Program, Woodstock Police Department conducted a cell phone action plan using Officer Freitas as a spotter. 18 tickets were issued for cell phone violations in the three hours that they were out. Um, Woodstock police will be hosting a prescription medication take back booth at Union Arena on Saturday, April 22nd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, April 22nd is also National Prescription Drug Take Back Day. And this is in addition to our drug take back box that we have in our lobby available 24 seven. Uh, recently Woodstock Police Department hosted a ride along for a student interested in law enforcement as part of their sophomore job shadow day program. And the meter revenue for March, 2023 um, through the kiosk, there was $2,285.35 generated um, meter through the meters was uh, $3,578.26 through the park mobile app was $3,608. So that brings the total to $9,471.61. And that is about a, a little over a thousand dollars increase from March of 2022, which total was eight thousand four hundred and seventeen dollars and forty cents. Great. Are there nice any questions for Kirsten? How's it going so far? Work-wise, mm -hmm. I enjoy it. You love our community. I like being back in ho at home. Honestly, I uh, was away for a little bit. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you very much. Thank so you. yeah, we are, and we're happy to have your smile too, because we can. We really like it when <clears throat> any of our officers are um, good and friendly ambassadors to those who live here, as well as those visit. I you bet. I have a question. Do we know what the status with uh, Caleb McIntyre is? 
Uh, that's you know. I would. I can answer that. That's, is that confidential? That, anyway. Yeah, that's kind of uh, on hold okay. still as we're still waiting. Um, and and uh, the chief is going to be in touch with us about about that. Okay. Bill, it's just yep. not just too early. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Kirsten. You're welcome. Okay. We're moving along to permits, uh, sidewalk permit. The first one that's scheduled for tonight is the village butcher. Um, and uh, originally this was Alex Barham wanting to, uh, in the summer months and maybe into the fall, do some grilling outside without blocking pedestrian walkway. And, but uh, David Green informed him that due to the fire code, he can't be as close to the building as he wanted to be. So we're looking for alternatives and he's gonna come back to us next month. And uh, one possibility everyone to think about uh, in talking to Alex was uh, taking the last parking space um, right along that side of the street, which is basically in front of his shop and him, him uh, buying the meter for the day in a sense and doing his uh, grill in that space, which would get him far enough away from the building and it might be a nice thing. So everyone think about that. And he was okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, we have to decide. And that'll be next. Okay. We next. do that every day? No. No, he's going to do it just periodically. Whether Peri it's periodically and when it's busy and uh, it, it, hoping to make it an attraction to increase and, and at the same time, he'd be serving customers inside his building. So to increase the availability of food, which as we know is a problem. So moving along, East End permit. We have Tom Weschler here. Tom, why don't you come join us? I would love to. Oh, sure. Hey, Bill, can you see me? Yeah, barely, I can see the back of your head. That's good enough. <laughs> I know what you look like, so. <laughs> So tell us what you want to do. Fourth of July, the first annual family fun walk run event we want to hold on the Ottaquichi River Trail. We have no idea what our attendance will be. Uh, we don't know that. Uh, but uh, we, as a trail, as you probably well know, got started on Labor Day of 2020. And we have been successful uh, enjoying um, good community use of the trail. Uh, we've had some trail counters and uh, we are averaging 500 users per week on the river trail. What time of year are you averaging that? Um, we've done it two different times, uh, Jeffrey. And, you know, I think we did one in the spring and one in the fall. And uh, as probably everybody knows, it's a 2.8 mile trail. It is a beautiful addition to the wonderful resources that Woodstock has in that it is a flat trail and people enjoy it. Uh, we, uh, the Thompson Senior Center comes down there on Mondays to organize things. Okay. Um, so uh, we're getting uh, good solid usage of it. Um, this is, uh, we have been uh, the majority of our funding to create and construct the trail has come from the Economic Development Commission. We originally received a $45,000 grant to fund us to start construction. We've recently been approved for another $20,000, $21,000 grant to make the first third of a mile of the trail uh, universally accessible. Uh, we will be following uh, the trail guidelines 
required to be able to have wheelchair access. Um, so we will be putting in a ramp. We will be hardening um, part of the trail. And uh, I think it's a real credit to Woodstock to be able to have uh, such a trail easily within a half a mile of the town center. Um, we partner very well with East End Park. It's just really the, the combination of East End Park with the River Trail really is enhancing and becoming more of a magnet to uh, development and activities in the East uh, of Woodstock, which is very desirable. So, um, but we as a trail need to grow up. We need to no longer be dependent on the economic development commission. We need to do fundraising. We will be joining, or uh, we have joined the Woodstock Community Trust. Uh, we will, we are now a 501c3 as a result of that. Uh, the fundraising, uh, we have done some in the past, um, but uh, going forward, uh, we have annual expenses for maintenance, trail maintenance, and other things, as well as further enhancements that we're looking forward to doing as time goes on. So this event, um, you know, we have all witnessed the great success that Zach's place has with the turkey trot. And what we were thinking and hoping is that we would have some modicum of success uh, with a family fun walk run. Uh, the 4th of July, there used to be a run, the John Langhans run. Uh, that right. has lapsed. I used to do that. But um, so the idea of a 5K, we will be having. We will, I sent you uh, some information, the best I could put together in a quick notice. Uh, we will, you know, go down the dirt road that is there. We will not go down the ramp because we're concerned about it being a bottleneck at the beginning. And so we'll go down the dirt road past spooners or, you know, and, and then go by the wastewater treatment facility and then do the trail. And then we would come back the same way. The walkers would follow the same route. The same route. Uh, no dogs. Um, we will um, try to, uh, we're just currently working on website and, you know, uh, how do we sign up and, you know, what is, you know, the, the whole process, you know, this is kind of new to us and we're trying to uh, take baby steps as we go through. We do hope to have some um, coffee and maybe some food uh, there and available. Uh, we talked to one of the property owners, Ben Jersey, who is, you know, he has picnic tables and we would then use that space for the setup. Um, we would have- The food would be on Ben Jerry's property? Ben Jerry's property. Yeah. We don't know who yet <laughs> uh, the food is going to be that we're still very much in the early phases of that, but we would have uh, probably similar to what the chamber has on the market on the green, you know, going to not a coffee or, you know, other locals, we would try to stress establishments as possible, um, people that would work. So uh, that's what I know. Um, tell me more or ask me more questions. Well, um, that sounds wonderful. And with the food being on Ben Jerry's property, it takes it out of our hands in terms of concerns or where or so forth. Right. It's private property. Um, 
But what about porta potties? As I indicated on the map, how many? I don't know. How many runners am I going to have? I don't know. Uh, and, you know, so two, two port potties. Two. That sounds like a good number. Yeah. I'm going with that. I think it makes sense. Yeah. Are you committing to two port potties? And, and and where are they located again? They're on the map. Yeah, down the dirt road where they had them last oh, year. Oh, right. Well, that's still on his property. Yeah, it's on Ben Jordan's. That's great. It makes it easy for the um, authority. So I, you said no dogs? No dogs. Um, do you allow dogs on the East End Park present, presently? I don't concern myself with East End Park. No, it's not East End Park. It's okay, it, yeah. The river Trail you're talking okay, about. Okay, yeah. Okay, so on the River Trail Park, do you allow dogs? On the Presently? river trail, we do say dogs must be Okay. So why wouldn't you continue with that? Because it's a family walk run. There is a concern that we have as dogs get my out ability. into the field. You know, I just, you know. So we're going uh, to start with that. The other thing that I have been informed by the farm manager who manages the property, it's owned by the Woodstock Resort, but managed by the farm manager at Billings, is that dogs off leash can be a problem for their hay. I didn't know this. I shared it with you, I think. Um, but uh, dog poop is bad for cows. There is a bacteria in dog poop, and if it gets into the hay, the hay is fed to the Billings Farm cows, and if a cow is pregnant, it can lead to an abortion. Wow. That makes and, sense. Yeah. And so, anyway, that. Yep. We have to, uh, we're sense. working on our signage uh, to be more clear about making sure that people, you know, care for the poop as well as dogs on the leash. Okay. But as to this event, what, what's going to happen on the village property? Just a gathering? Uh, I'm going to use your parking. Parking, yes. And I imagine people might gather. Um, I would I imagine I have been working with the folks at East End Park. They're supporting, they're encouraging, and happy to have something happen there. Uh, the thought is we're, the event is at 9 o'clock. We'll be there at 8 o'clock to set up. Uh, the event is theoretically going to go until 11. Um, what would then happen is maybe the participants would come into center of Woodstock and then eventually later in the day, they're going to go to the west of Woodstock uh, for fireworks oh, and sure. everything. So we're going to go east, middle, and west. So it's hopefully this becomes something second in the Right. So I imagine just the standpoint of the village park, people will be congregating there, but the food won't be there and the porta potties won't be there. So again, this is your trail, right? You own the trail. It's, Only on the village property. Well, no, it's it's a you no, know, we're a bunch of volunteers. You know, Tom, I'm just saying I, I'm just trying to say don't, you know, it's your insurance is helping us it's our organization lives under the umbrella of the town and the village so i'm just trying to not say that you're just looking at east and whatever you know this is kind of uh and the event is going to be from what time to what time Take a, well, they're going to be there from 8 to 11, but eight. 9 to 11 is... Okay. Yeah. Eight 9 11. is the event. Okay. We might, again, depending on what we see, 
Do you have an arrangement with Sunset Farms? For parking, yes. Yes. And I might that, have to that, that, that arrangement only occurs on weekends. Um, this is a uh, starting well, this is a holiday. It's just okay. the fall. But this year, yes, sir. Tom, just to let you know, this year Pentangle went directly to the East End Art and to 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 uh, Sunset. Sunset to make that arrangement instead of the village making. So the village, they Pentangle paid us back last year for us a, a making that arrangement. This year, Alita made the arrangement directly. It's only on Friday nights, is that right, Jeffrey? I think Friday nights. Right. Well, you know, yeah. originally it was to be up to 10 events. Up to 10. And for a fee. So you need to speak to Alita to see what right, her I arrangement is, and then you, if, if you can... And then I'll do jump onto that. Yeah, next last year would have been appropriate to speak to us on that, but this year it needs to be late. Okay. Yeah, it's it's arranged for Friday evenings only uh, for Pentangle because that's when Music by the River is. Well, right. and how many and how many events are you doing? Eight, eight, eight events. Yeah, leaving two, eight Friday nights. Two others covered if she's if they're amenable to the same terms. They gave her the same terms as us. I would assume so. I don't know. Well, I, I speak to a lead about that, that you, you'd be covered if they would extend that to you. That would be awesome to, you know, they're a property owner for us. And, you know, so the idea of, you know, hopefully, you know, having some parking and we're gonna run across the property. Yeah. The only question I have left is, is for Eric, um, is our insurance, yeah, so um, there's an agreement with the resort in the town village for us to cover the, their insurance. And the other property owners. And the property owners, yes. Um, and so it's a yearly uh, re-up, and we just signed a new one today, actually. Um, so our insurance does cover uh, the trail. Okay. In that case, and, and with the explanations we heard today with the, the food and porta potties being on private property, I would uh, in a motion to approve the. Program. Hey Jeffrey, I've got a quick question. Yes. Um, I, thought, I thought we would you... then go into discussing it, but. Oh, ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, I just wanted to ask Tom if he had um, spoken with Robbie yet. No. No. Was I supposed to? Well, you might want to if you get a bigger turnout than you. Event, you know, that was a question, and again, I don't know. Uh, Seton's right, you need to make him aware. You might want to, uh, he might want to have an officer out there, traffic control. Um, oh, well, then there might be multiple locations because some people might come in at recycling, some people might come in at East End. So, yes, I. I will. I have to speak to David Green to make sure that my trail and my universal accessibility. This was a caveat added to my plan. So I will speak to uh, the emergency services. Great. Good thought, Seaton. Thank you. Um, so I just turn the motion. I second. No. I didn't. Oh, yes. I was hoping to entertain a motion. I make a, make a bill. I make a motion. I second. <laughs> to approve as presented, as we've heard tonight. Um, yes. Okay, any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 That's, all. That's five ayes. Therefore, the motion carries. Thank you, Tom. Thank it sounds you, like Tom. it's a wonderful. Oh, yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And right. let's hope we get a good turnout. Oh, you will. So, yeah, okay. oh, I think you will. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Tom. Thank you. Jeffrey, real quick, will there be any fee or security deposit attached to this? I The uh, the original, just the basic fee. It's, I paid, uh, you know, paid the basic fee. The basic fee, yes. That's been paid, I thought. I saw, I saw a check number. Right, there's an application fee, a function fee, and a security deposit. He did pay the application fee, but I don't know if you want to have a function fee attached as well as the security deposit. Um, I think in this case, we're gonna waive it 
uh, unless, okay. the, unless the other board members object. Um, and because he's not to see how it goes this first year. Yeah. And in terms of what's happening on on the village property I see, itself, I think, think Seaton wants to say something. Seaton. Seaton. Oh, thanks. So, and I I wasn't sure if I missed this as I was in and out of the car. But is any part of this going to be physically in the East End Park? Just human Not the bodies. parking lot. Not not not. Uh, just just people might be going there because it's adjacent to where this the run is happening okay but any of the like the starting the the you know if they use uh Private microphones property. or like any of that that is all happening in the parking lot or on ben jervie's property or yes. on the trail and that, so none property. of that is yeah. yes that's okay, all on so, ben jervie's property okay so there will be no gather like official gathering at east end park not official, no. Okay, okay, because that's when we would need the the fee and all that sort of stuff. But right. if there's not an event happening in the park proper, that's fine with me. Not officially. Yeah. So you're going to return my application fee then? No, we're not going to pay any more. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving along. Old business. Uh, the, the green the, uh, class of oh yeah oh right the use of the green permit for the class of 2023 banners um and this looks like it's the same, the same, same as last year um and the year before um and, and people have really enjoyed seeing pictures of the graduates i love it i think it's great i do too it's wonderful and i don't see any changes in it i mean just read it um so i'd entertain a motion to approve that as as presented i second Okay. <laughs> Somebody's uh, okay. I have a second, and Gabe has made the motion oh, to leave. Yes, I did. Thank you. Oh, I did. <laughs> um, any further discussion? Oh, yeah. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. 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 Bill? Aye. Okay. Yes, aye from Bill. Eyes all the way around. Okay, great. That motion passes. Let's move on um, to the uh, ARPA discussion. And I do want to say that uh, um, I walked around with uh, Mark, uh, the head of our de Department of Public Works, and uh, we looked at sidewalks, and he has been in touch with uh, a contractor at this point to get us a price, which we just don't have yet. I know that uh, this board has looked towards uh, the repair of some of our sidewalks. Um, um, as the a use for the ARPA funds that are left for the village, um, along with um, money from a trust fund having to do with the sidewalks as well. He assured me, just to my unfortunate <laughs> feelings, that, that mo those two monies together would not cover what Brenda and I <laughs> um, recommended, but it would certainly cover a large part of it, but not the whole thing. Um, but we don't know yet what will happen. So I don't know if there's anything else to be discussed tonight. And if not, that will we will have that on the agenda for next month's meeting and when we'll have more information. Thanks, Eric. Um, moving on, there's an amendment to the Title IX of the Village Green, Parks and Public Places, chapters one and four. And uh, I can give an update on this that if you'd like, great. unless Eric yeah. wants to do it. Go so, go for it. Uh, go for it. so as going through, uh, and I think it was Gabe who actually followed up with me on this, and I'm so glad he did. Um, in the mix of town managers and all that sort of stuff, last fall uh, we started the process of uh, of of um, amending our ordinances to say that in Tribu Park, we weren't going to allow any banners, signs, or uh, or any sort of uh, uh, temporary structures. We had a discussion about it. We all agreed to the language. That was, um, wait a minute, that was, excuse, I'm just gonna break in and say, you meant to say signs that are attached to the ground. In the yes, yes, my apologies, yes. Uh, okay. Thank you for the clarification. Um, and so we, I wrote up, uh some amendments and we all agree to them the next step was for tom to take it to a lawyer to make sure that it was correct and make any changes necessary 
uh, and that's where the ball got dropped. Um, and so we all sort of went along our merry way and luckily Gabe brought it up and said, hey, did we ever officially do that? And the answer was no. So nothing has changed since then, but Eric has taken it to a lawyer um, and that lawyer has looked at it. And so I believe now we are up to the point where we need to officially um, vote for that language change. And then I believe, Erica, maybe you can tell us, I think it's like, it has to sit for like a certain amount of days for public comment before it goes into effect. Is that correct? Correct, yes. 60 or 30? I believe Nikki, is it 45? It's 60, 45 60. to petition. Okay. 44 to petition. Um, yeah. Are you committing the ball with Nikki? No, never. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> um, so, um, but yeah, I mean, these are all the things that we've gone over. So, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's great that we have it in legal form. Uh, and these general regulations uh, would also apply to Teagle's Landing, would they not? Without, although it's not specifically named. I have to look into that. You talking about the, the Jordan and Sierra? I believe we just set it for Tribu. Yeah, Tribu and, and the Village Green you mentioned and here. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm one, just wondering what about Tigo's Landing? I know it's a pocket park, it's really small, but. But it doesn't that go under public places? Um, it does if that's covered. Yeah, well, it says, I, it would, says uh, right public here. property. Yeah. It says public places. It's a public place. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just not mentioned. The other two are. Um, yeah, I'm good with this. Does anyone else have comments on it? Would you feel more comfortable if it was spelled out? Um, not if we feel it's covered because it's a public space. Um, because uh, suddenly we find somebody going down there and putting things in the ground, and yeah. and, and we'll say, why didn't we put that in there? It is. It's, 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 it's a tiny, well, what, what would you call it? I call it a park. It's a tiny pocket park. It's got two. I don't know what to call it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd call it, a, I'd call it a park. I mean, it says village green parks and public places. So that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty broad. Okay. All right. If we feel like it's covered, that, that I'm happy with it. I think it should be. Okay. Okay. So, uh, do we have to adopt this by a vote? Yes. Do not approve it based on based on legal review or no? We didn't approve this exact wording. Okay. Because it's mm -hmm. legal. Yeah, it does. Yeah, or it has made up to it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So. I second. No. I make a motion that we accept this as as. As presented. As, as presented. I second. Okay. Motion is made by Brenda and seconded by Gabe. Uh, any further discussion on this amendment to Title IX of the Village Green Park Public Spaces, Places, Chapters One and Four? Hearing none, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Bill? Aye. Aye. Uh, five ayes. The amendment uh, is past. Okay, uh, is there any other business to come before the board on this lovely spring evening? I would just like to um, uh, see if we can add uh, for next month's agenda um, follow-ups to the town meeting with the business owners. Okay. So there, there were a number of takeaways um, at that gathering and yes it makes sense to address a few of them Seton, uh, uh you're still in agreement with that yes absolutely yeah and uh for those uh and anyone who's listening uh there was a gathering of the uh, retail restaurant and hospitality businesses in the village of woodstock um that was extremely well attended um, and uh, uh, it was the biggest meeting of those businesses in many, many years. It was open to all businesses, not just for chamber members. 
and it, it was productive. We heard a lot of viewpoints and a lot of concerns. And the, there is a small working committee that's going to be meeting um, and to come up with constructive ideas that will then be uh, passed along to the a larger meeting again to see if, if uh, how the business community feels about it. So I think it's a it's a positive for Woodstock that that occurred. And uh, Gabe has uh, put this forward to uh, discuss some of the key points, which I think is a great idea. Do you mind if I, if, uh, Jeffrey, if I just yeah, why don't you highlight make, a few? Why don't you have, sure, and then and then, and then we'll, we'll 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 uh, we'll pick some of these to to right. go through next time. Terrific. So, um, the first takeaway I got from the meeting was uh, there aren't many options for eateries on Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays. I know we've had this conversation many times. Um, retailers, most retailers only open till five p.m. Uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, during busy times is inconsistent. Uh, lack of parking in town. Parking meters are challenging to navigate and meter maids are not welcoming. Uh, need to return to community policing model. Uh, buses during foliage present a challenge. Um, one third of the EDC's budget is devoted to marketing. Is it too little or too much? Uh, staffing at establishments is a challenge, um, and this is, this was echoed by retailers and restaurateurs. And transportation, uh, having transportation between White River and Rutland would help attract workers who have transportation challenges. And then there was a couple of others that uh, uh, I think want. Uh, there was a there was a comment to involve uh, the Woodstock Inn, at least having them be able to provide information as to when they're having large groups or large weddings coming to town at particular periods of time so that retailers and restaurateurs could then determine whether they wanted to have additional hours or staffing so um, that that would be helpful. Yeah, that's true. And it was then recommended that if that was provided by the Woodstock Inn, the chamber could be dispersed from there. For right. general, so only one phone call. Correct. Uh, yeah. Correct. Great idea. So yeah, so let's put that on um, to keep it up. Um, and hopefully by the next meeting, there will also have been at least a small meeting uh, that has occurred between. Thank you, Gabe. Any other business to be brought up? Um, yes. Uh, I would like to actually just add that um, if we're going to monitor this particular situation with the complaints and the needs of our tourists and, and our business owners, then I think we should also take a look at like what is the percentage of our, our um, bed and breakfast and our inns? What is the percentage of them being at 100% throughout the year? So that's a that's a very good question, Brenda. And and I think um, there was a uh, it was circulated uh, a study that was done uh, for Stowe uh, many years back, and they actually engaged um, a firm. Um, and Seton, you can chime in at any point here, but the, they engaged a firm, um, Crane Associates out of Burlington, um, that helped them uh, conduct surveys of both residents and tourists to gauge their interest, lack of interest in certain certain things that occur in the community, whether it be having events, having too many events, too little events, um, you know, what their opinions were with regard to retailers, uh, regard to tourism. So it, it really, it really was comprehensive. I thought it was a, it was very well done. Um, um, but maybe something that we could consider um, and maybe get the EDC to help us potentially fund it. Perfect. I'm right <laughs> on time, Jill. And uh, um, to, to maybe fund some kind of study so that we can actually have data to back up our actions. We shouldn't just, you know, well, uh, we shouldn't just you're go probably, ahead and go probably aware that the EDC is. Okay. Has a planning, is in the mm -hmm. planning of having a survey done. Okay. This year, I was aware of that um, on, on three levels. Uh, I, I had heard that. But I, don't, I don't have all. I don't know the details. Right, residents, uh, 
visitors okay. and the business community are the three legs that they're, okay. they're going to be uh, surveying. I have not seen the, the, the questions yet, but if you, I think it'd be important to get in touch with John Spector and find okay. out who's running that direction of that, because you might want to add some questions such as you were talking about that maybe they weren't going to consider rather than trying to run two surveys to those kind of, to okay. the, all three sure. of those groups. And I'm happy to um, send that to anybody. I was just trying to figure out one of the things that they really did was it was almost an audit of Stowe, right? Like what does Stowe have? What do they not have? What do people want? What do they not want? Um, and looking and creating sort of um, uh, like use cases. Like if somebody comes with, you know, you know, with young kids, what is there for them? What do they want? What do they need? You know, if it's a retired couple that comes, if it's a single person that comes, if it's a resident that, you know, is retiring, if it's a young family that lives there. So taking a look from different points of view of these are the people that are coming to visit. These are the people who live here, you know, and so what do they, what do they like? What do they not like? So it's, it was a full audit, not just like a survey, but really looking at like, we have playgrounds, you know, let's make sure that people know that we have free playground, you know, those sorts of things. Um, and I'm happy to share it. It's a yeah. large study, but, um, um, but I'm happy to pass that over to my, my Don or anybody I else. Know, I don't want to take, you know, I, yeah. I don't think this is the forum to, to have this conversation because there's a lot in it. But the, the one question I would have is they did the survey, they, they got their feedback. And the question is, what did they do about it? And what was the what was the result? What is different in Stowe today since they did that study? Um, that would be what I would be interested in. And I don't know how we get hold of that. Maybe it's a conversation with your counterpart or uh, yeah. so so it's it's interesting. And I'm and, and I just it happened to be Stowe. It could have they could have done this in other communities. How long ago was this? Uh, it's an old one. So it's 2007. Or 2007. Oh, but, but oh it, I thought it was 2017. I thought so too because I, I thought so too when <laughs> I look back as 2007. But either way, there, there's some valid information there, um, and, and once again, it would be interesting to see where they landed after undertaking such a study. What did they do about it? Is really the important thing, and it did it work out for them? Yeah, that would be good to find out. Yeah. Helpful. Okay. Um, all right, any other business to come before us tonight before we get to the minutes? Hearing none, um, we have the minutes of 314.23 and 321.23. Um, you know, and, and because we are two minutes away from this being a one hour meeting, record setting, not then, actual. Then we have to cut you right there, though. <laughs> uh, we are in jeopardy. No, I've got to say we're not in jeopardy because Nikki, I couldn't find one error on either one. Oh, uh, so please. I do have to note your sentences are shorter and you're not going into as much detail. It didn't give me enough room to find an error. And I I congratulate you with an A plus plus. If I'm gonna be you. Was anyone else have a comment <laughs> on the minutes besides no. me? You, you you did it, Nikki. Good job, Nikki. Thank you. Uh, if not, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes, both those sets. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Bill? You still there, Bill? But we have four ayes. Um, and then uh, I, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion at six at seven by the time I finish it'll be 7 30. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second my 729 chairman. Yeah all, all those in favor say aye. 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 Um, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thanks y'all. Yeah have fun seeking.